this past week. Doug Bruno, the head coach, 700 wins and change. And off we go, Marquette and DePaul for the 76th time here on a Wednesday afternoon here in Chicago. You see Marquette in their baby blues. If you know Marquette, you love those baby blues for sure. The tradition, including right away inside. And it's going to belong to Marquette and DePaul wearing their alternate reds. Well, right away inside for Marquette. Coach Megan Duffy telling us, you know, we need to use our size and our length to our advantage against an undersized DePaul team. Lob up in. Van Clunen, left hand and in. Again, going inside. Now DePaul will try to stretch the floor, up-tempo basketball, make Marquette run with them. Everybody gets comfortable here. Lexi held on the drive. That won't fall. It's Cameron Taylor, the sophomore from Peoria on that really, really good Peoria Richwoods team that we saw a couple years ago here in Illinois win a Class 3 state championship. Lob up, and there's Cameron there. Gets it back. Third try, a tip. Still loose, and it's going to belong to DePaul on the loose ball foul. You see how active Marquette is down low, crashing the boards. They will climb all over you with that size height. But you, you saw, Matt, two straight possessions, two attempts inside. Nice lob passing there. Almost finished that off. Paul really going to have to focus in on denying passes into the post down at the other end. In the baseline corners. Morris will try for the first time. That tipped out rebound, and Marquette off to a good start on the boards. And right into the rim, Jordan King. State line product, Hananiga. And it's a quick 4-0 lead for Marquette. Just Morris open on 15-foot range right along the free throw line. One and done for DePaul so far. These two teams are capable of big spurts. That's a lot inside fighting for that rebound. But DePaul last time around got off to a huge lead in the early stages of the third quarter. Marquette came back, made it a one possession game. These are two teams that can put a lot of points on the board very quickly. He's a church. Six points played against uh, Creighton this weekend. We did not see her against uh, Xavier a week ago. So curious to see how that ankle is doing. Drive on in, all the way to the rim, Selena Lott. We've got some really good perimeter players in this game. Obviously, DePaul is full of them. Sonia Morris right there passing the ball. Alexi held with the ball right now. Selena Lott also one of the tops in the Big East Conference. DePaul just one of five from the floor to start this one. Two and a half minutes in, he's got one bucket. Marquette's got a couple. And because of that, a timeout. Doug Bruno does not like the start for the Blue Demons. Selena Lott leading the way for Marquette. Balanced scoring effort and a good start for the Golden Eagles on the road with an 8-2 lead early here in Chicago. High school glory days to great careers on the college level. I mean, both Diva Kelja and Lauren Van Clunen have really just been fabulous in college. A fun to see them reunite now uh, at a higher level. When you call basketball, you and I both call basketball games at different levels, whether it's college or high school. We see a lot of the high school kids get to the college level, and then we watch them grow for a good eight years in some mm -hmm. sense. And then we see these matchups at the high school level, and they become even more uh, intense and, and, and personal in some sense in the, at the college level. And that's a lot of fun to see that competition in the context of that as well. Lexi held with the three right out of the timeout. They needed that coming right they out of did. the break. They did. And, and the three-point shooting for DePaul has kind of struggled a bit in recent games. So that was a big bucket for Lexi held to get that to go down. Kind of wrap up that point that we were talking about. All of these players, and yes, the, some are from this state, some are from that state. They all, in a sense, know each other thanks to the world of, of obviously the digital age, Social but AA, AAU basketball. Yep. So they all have a better sense of who they are. Whereas, say, 20 years ago, you only you, you occasionally saw highlights and mm -hmm. you kind of read them in the paper, and that's really all you knew about somebody. Yep. Yeah, they meet each other out on the AAU circuit and then they follow each other on Twitter. And before you know it, they're really good friends. Yeah. Look at that uh -oh, block by about, Van Clunen. 
on Dee Bakelja. <laughs> oh, she, she remembered that state mm -hmm. semifinal game a few years ago. She, she didn't like how Dee Bakelja deed her up so good. She said, okay, now we're a little more even. For Bakelja, <laughs> that has to be the least surprising block that she's had all year because of the, the that aspect of it. Here's held in the lane, short. And then Marquette coming out with a different energy than DePaul at the moment. You can see it running the floor, Murata, and tipped out. It's going to belong. Where is it going to go? Is it going to stay with Marquette? Yes. Well, Coach Doug Bruno telling me that, you know what, when you shoot as fast as we do, we have to commit to playing defense and we have to rebound. And, and DePaul going to have to match Marquette's energy and get back in defensive transition. A lot on the inbound. Picked up. There's Morris on the run out. Bakelja all alone for a minute. Stopped. She couldn't finish it, and it stays with DePaul on the rebound. But you talk about that energy. DePaul equally able to fire up the burners there and get down the floor quickly in offensive trans transition. And that is where Marquette really got burned the first time around. DePaul won that game because they forced 22 Marquette turnovers and scored off of those turnovers. Marquette's going to have to really watch and take care of the basketball, not give DePaul those runaway opportunities at the basket there off of mistakes. DePaul just 2 of 10 from the floor. Moore is trying to change that. Blocked. And it's going to stay with DePaul. But Marquette Taylor had doing a foot a, on the baseline. Marquette doing a great job of, of really challenging shots of, of the, the DePaul shooters, getting their hands on the basketball without fouling. Kara Dahlman, uh, some early minutes. And Morris is going to come out for a minute. It's an early exit for her for a brief moment. Rogers in the game and held from 17. You give her that space, she'll knock it down. King all the way into the lane. No one stopped her until about 10 feet, and it's a jump on the rebound. It's going to go to DePaul. Get a look at Megan Duffy, the head coach. Spent a couple seasons at Miami of Ohio, postseason trips, and obviously her pedigree, Notre Dame, we're playing in the WNBA, she knows basketball and she's shown it to these kids. But she told us, you know, her MO as a player was she wasn't the most athletic or the flashiest. She was a really hard worker and she has tried to impart that on her team. Just being hard nosed, bring your, your lunch pail and hard hat to work kind of players. Uh, and, and that seems to be translating over the last couple of years here with Megan Duffy and her teams. And she, you get the feeling that she appreciates just going up against some of the legends in this league, obviously. Oh, and a that. steal there is held, and she'll get an easy lay-in as a result. What Lexi Held just has such quick hands. You better watch it. You better be strong with the basketball. In fact, Megan Duffy, Duffy telling us, we've got to be strong with the basketball against DePaul. A lot, of, a lot of worry about the turnovers in the front court, and the three from the top of the key is a little too strong. Rogers on the run out, held, looking to head towards the middle. Now does. Church had a look, and they'll settle down in the half court. Rogers went around that screen, and that's tipped out of bounds, going to belong to Marquette. But Marquette the last couple of years solidified their place in the upper echelon in the Big East. For a while, it was one of those, can they find their way there? And then they have the last couple of years. What's been the difference if you watch this Marquette program over the last couple of years? Well, I think Marquette is starting to get the players that a DePaul and a UConn have gotten over the years um, and, and really kind of build an identity. For a while there, they had a lot of really strong perimeter players. Megan Duffy's got herself some nice interior players. She likes an inside low post game. Uh, just, I think, quality players. And I think that you can see that all across the Big East Conference. A lot of really talented players in this league, making it one of the toughest in all of women's college basketball. Not everybody feels that way about the Big East. We'll get more into that, though. Or Allen trying to chase down the rebound. Here's King with it. She gets around a defender. She's got numbers if she wants it. Takes it all the way in and floats it up from about six feet. Just a really savvy play there by Jordan King, just a sophomore. You saw how she surveyed the area there and just decided to take it herself. Didn't force anything. Nice play. Allen missed an open look. 
Double team on the rebound and a foul on Morris. Dory Allen, the transfer from Indiana for DePaul. She is going to be a good player here for the Blue Demon. She got declared eligible earlier in the season, has started to put up some good numbers. She wants that basket back, but they are looking for her. They want her to shoot the basketball more. She is their higher, highest percentage shooter. You saw right there how Sonia Morris threaded the needle. Great interior post bounce pass for Jory Allen. They want her to get more touches. She had just four shots against Xavier last week. They want her up in, in the double digits for sure. Doug Bruno talked a lot about her before she was eligible in terms of how they really want to see her and see how this lineup looks with her. And they've he's gotten a good sample size. And, and you have, a, a, as well as we've watched both here and from afar, what are some of the things that you've noticed from with Joy Alley, what she adds to this, to this team in terms of just being able to spread things out for that well, offense outside spread things out but also uh, some interior defense and you yeah. saw there with uh, taylor just kind of having her way in a mismatch with lexi held and had jory allen been in there that that's a little bit of a, of a tougher move for cameron taylor to make inside so that is something that depaul really needs they need an interior post presence not only offensively to stretch the, the defense keep the defense honest you know, kick the ball from inside to out but also that interior defensive presence against some of these bigger taller teams like Marquette no rebounds yet just two shots saw that one open look just a minute ago she's on the on the bench taking a, oh, a that's break a great right now matchup right there Morris against Selena Lott L driving on in nice clean look we got to watch that matchup. Matt, Selena Lott, one of the best defensive players in the Big East against one of the best offensive players in the Big East in Sonia Morris. A lot of slicing to the rim and a foul. We're going to go the other way. Well, Marquette is handling that press, and a lot of it has to do with, with how Jordan King plays. I mean, you you talked about it a minute ago. Just You can see the steady nature for which she is just going to methodically move through this press when she can. Coach Megan Duffy calling King, who is just a sophomore, her little steady Eddie, she's just been very consistent in the way that she has run the Marquette offense. A nice cross-court pass. Had a look for a minute. They go right inside to Purcell. Morris will try the three. That's too strong. Rebound picked up and taken away. Taylor Valade in for the first time. Oh, how about that? Morris skied, for that, skied for that rebound over Lott. Dangerous pass. But Bikelja saw an opening on the baseline once she, once she had it and yeah. we're tied. That was a tough shot. She made it look easy, but that was a tough shot. Valade all the wow. way to the rim. Taylor Valade, the sophomore from the south side. Marquette not afraid to run with DePaul. Kelja will unload. That's too strong. Halliday on the baseline stopped for a minute. And Clunin cleared out. Offensive. Just that elbow came out a little bit for Lott. That was slow to get up, by the way, in the corner. That's a great defensive play by Lexi Held. Lexi Held going against one of the best players in the Big East and taking it head on and just drawing that contact. Lexi Held just losing her breath a little bit. She's still underneath the basket she there. Immediately reached for her midsection area. Well, some, you just can have the wind knocked right <laughs> out of you if you get you hit can. in just the right place at just the right velocity. I mean, that was some major contact on that play. Doug Bruno taking a long look. She, she's definitely just trying to catch her breath here. She's yep. going to have to come out anyway, but. Lexi Held, she's going to be big. They want to get her back in this game. 17 points the last time around against Marquette. She can light it up with the best of them, and you can see what kind of defensive presence she can bring on the perimeter. Dory Allen is back in. She is without a rebound, as we mentioned, and focus is going to be on rebounding. Marquette already with a 17 to nine advantage on the boards. They got a couple of second chance opportunities too. They haven't really taken full advantage of that just yet. Baseline and a foul. The is gonna shoot some free throws. This DePaul team is a three point shooting team. They love the three. They 
They lead the Big East in three-pointers made, but in the last few games, the threes have, have been hard to come by sometimes. Yep. And Doug Bruno saying, you know what? We've got to be versatile. And what do you do when you're not shooting well from the perimeter? We've got to get the ball inside. They're looking inside there on that play to Bekelja. Get yourself to the free throw line. He is by no means not telling his players to, to shoot the basketball. He, he wants them to keep shooting. He would never do that. That's part of his philosophy is you got the greenest green light in America, but you also have to be prepared to find other ways to score offense when the shots aren't going down from long range. And that's that tends to happen in March. And, and that's one of those things when you get to the tournament, if the if the offense isn't there from the outside, you've, you've got to find a way to get buckets and score. And those that can't do that end up getting sent home quickly. Rodgers will try from the top of the key. That won't go. And, and this is where the focus is as you talk about points in the paint. And, and it's kind of rare. These two teams, last opponent was a common one with, with Creighton. So they have, a, a, you know, there's some uh, transitive property elements that you can look at, but a glaring omission for both of these two teams is points in the paint. Very different when Marquette's matchup on Monday with Creighton than what DePaul did on, on Saturday, uh, losing to Creighton in a game they were down by double digits, down by 17 for much of that second half. Well, in that game, DePaul, the three-point shooting was a struggle, and then they lost the points in the paint 38 to 28. They also lost the rebounding more, and that was what Doug Bruno was saying. Hey, if you're going to shoot as quick and as often as we do, we have to defend and we have to rebound. DePaul did not do that against Creighton. Marquette did. King all the way in, stepping through two defenders. She has Strong made, move. Yeah, she's made some really good moves to the basket. She has been looking for her offense to start this game. She's got six points. Leading Marquette scores. Mikelja. They can't get that one to fall. One of six from the outside now for DePaul. The final minute of this opening frame. King looking for, trying to get in the block there. Morata had position for a minute. Valadek finally gets it to her. Shot clock winding down to seven. Baseline look, and she drew a foul. So Morata, the junior, will head to the free throw line. Marquette just being super patient in this possession, trying to work the clock to its advantage. A nice strong move there by Morata, who continues that tradition of, of height that Marquette has mm -hmm. here. 6-1, they start 6-1, 6-2 in Taylor, 6-2 in Van Cloonen. That That's uh, tough for any team to go up against uh, three six-footers in the starting lineup. Murata, an 86%, 87% free throw shooter. Gets the first one to fall. Good battle so far. Took a bit for DePaul to get going. They've, they've gotten their stride just a little bit. Starting to get grind away at it. Get it in the paint. Morris going to try from the outside. Marquette with a two and a half second shot clock to game clock differential. Valaday will start it. Valaday only played 10 minutes in their first matchup. She's already on the floor. Van Kloon in from about 16. A little short. And still plenty of time for DePaul. Held's going to put, look to move here. Eight seconds. Gets the screen, gets the baseline, looking for some help. Rogers going to have to go. Three ball at the horn. Will be a little bit too strong. And a microcosm of the outside shooting for DePaul, leaving them one of eight from long range and down by three after one quarter of play. Look at the DePaul huddle, and in the middle of that is uh, the always but particularly animated Doug Bruto uh, talking to his kids. And, and, and you know what, when you, when you, you hear, you see it a lot. There's, there's certainly a, a lot of energy and a lot of passion from Doug Bruno, but there's certainly an urgency after what he saw on Saturday, yep. what he's seen in terms of what the leads have been like that have shrunk late, but they've held on a couple times yep. to try and get this thing into gear before they get into March. Yeah, uh, he's concerned. DePaul did not shoot well in that first quarter, six of 25 from the field, one of eight from three point range. You know, he's been very impressed with his players all season long and just their resiliency and how they haven't taken a woe is me approach to this season. They're the only team in the Big East that hasn't been on pause. But he's seen some things that concern him and, and losing focus sometimes, you know, building these big leads. You talked about it, Matt. There, there are four games. Um, they had a four-game stretch in which they were up by double digits in all those games, including Marquette, where they were up by yeah. 17, and all those leads shrank. 
And then finally, they, they lost that game to Creighton. And, and uh, Doug Bruno saying, hey, we try to tell you guys this. We try to tell you that you've got to stay focused for an entire 40 minutes. You, you can't lose focus against anybody. The leads will shrink, and then eventually you'll lose a basketball game. So he wants to see a little bit more uh, focus and, and his players dialed in more in this game. And, and that turnover right there is not going to make him feel any better. You hear that phrase all the time. You can only play with fire so much before it comes back to get you. That's right. And uh, and, and we saw it Saturday. And, and, but it was in a different way in terms of just the fact that they trailed most of the way and, and just couldn't find a way out of that. They couldn't flip the switch on. So they're looking for that switch right now. That's a great pass. Beautiful look inside and the finish. We talked to Megan Duffy today about their interior passing and how much they work on, on just the art of getting the post players the basketball because that is a strength of theirs. They want to utilize it. They want to spotlight it. And so they really work on angles, on different kind of post passes. And that was a beautiful high-low post pass. Jory Allen gets in the book. First bucket of the game. And you talk about what is Jory Allen bring. She brings that kind of post presence and then another, you know, and that's the way that DePaul can kind of make up deficits and score points quickly coming off a basket, getting a steal in a quick second basket. They're looking for a flurry. They got two in a row there. And Clunin has a little space to work with. Kick out to the corner. It's Jordan King from long range. Too strong. Morris still scoreless in this one. 0 for 5. Held. Doug Bruno telling me he never talks to a player about the way that they're shooting the basketball. He does not want to get in their heads like that. So you will not hear Doug Bruno complaining about 0 for 5. As long as you're taking good shots and you're open and no one is more op open than you are, he won't say a word. Thank Lunin and block from behind. But obviously they need Sonia Morris to start hitting shots. She is the leading scorer on this team with 19 points per game. She needs to get in the books for DePaul. Marquette on a miss, trying to press the issue and, and run with DePaul down the floor. John Clunin, one of the better, better post players to run the floor on the secondary break. Good look in there. Left hand that time, too short. And a whistle and a foul. And who are they going to get? Looks like they're going to get Cam Taylor on that one. Kiara Dahlman, that is why she is in the game for DePaul right now. She's 6'2 junior for the Blue Demons, given the Blue Demons some size inside, going up there, challenging Van Clunen, challenging that shot. That's a nice defensive possession for the Blue Demons. Morris in the corner. Tries to go to the corner with Rodgers. Here's held with it, lost it, has to chase it down at 10 on the shot clock. Ends up right inside, Dalman, and everybody had to travel. A little bit of a, a dragon of the foot there, but a nice idea. The defense was defending the perimeter well, so then you pop it inside and try to create something there. Good idea, just a little bit of a travel. You know, one thing with this press, there isn't a ton of depth for Marquette on their roster. If you can wear them down, as we've seen DePaul do with other teams, mm -hmm. that you, you might be able to reap the benefits of that at least in the second half. Although DePaul has a little bit of a shorter bench than they right. used to as well. They're down three players also. Look at that block from Dahlman in the run out. Here's Church. Foot race, the left hand. That's beautiful basketball right there. That's seeing the floor. That's being aware of teammates. And that's hustling if you're Deja Church to finish. Back the other way. Lob in, there's Van Clunen. Boy, they love that lob, don't they? Just could not finish. She had all, all by herself, the left hand on the, oh, <laughs> the spin around. The grandma, she is not to be denied. I love her relentlessness down in the post. Church on the crossover, stop from 10, it's short. Getting up and down a little bit here. Rogers That's will take nice it. nice defense by Rogers. Way to get back. Three on two. Corner, Church, open, look. That won't go. Back the other way. It's Valade right to the rim. Going back and forth. Yeah, these two teams are quick and they are getting up and down the floor. There's a lot of fatigue out here at the moment. They're trying to get to a timeout. Held on the baseline. Oh, nice. Right to the rim. Lexi Held has all the tricks in her bag. Three-point shooter, slasher. 
Van Clune in the layup. The way that Lexi held can kind of just toy with you and it just changed speeds to get herself to the rim. So impressive. One of the best in the business. How good she is at running down the floor. That's going to go out of bounds. And a whistle. We haven't had one in a while. A couple subs. Rogers is going to come out. Daniger. Have to help out defensively here. Been tight so far after an early run from Marquette. It has been back and forth. Trying to look in, nobody's there. Van Clunen on the bench for a minute. Nope, she's right there in the middle. King, or rather, she is on the bench. Taking a break. Well, it's physical out there. Yeah, yeah it really wow. is. Wow. You can see it. Everybody's kind of grimacing a little bit. Yeah. Some sort of pain. It's Liza Carlin who's in every, for the first time. Every pass is being challenged. Every cut is being challenged. I mean, you can't move without somebody being draped all over you in this game. And Marquette's definitely blessed with size. It's Carlin holding on to it. They tried to get Murata in the block. She's held that position for a while. Valaday working the baseline, and she drew the foul. She'll have free throws coming up. Nothing coming easy on that possession for Marquette. A little bit of a timeout to settle things down. Take a deep breath. Gonna be a back and forth one for a while here. Marquette with a three point. These two teams met on February 7th was 22 turnovers for Marquette that led to 33 points for DePaul, and that was a DePaul victory. The points in the paint, 24 to 14 in favor of Marquette, rebounding 27 to 15 already in favor of the Golden Eagles. And, you know, one more thing, you know, as, as much as we love watching uh, Van Clunen run up and down and be able to, you know, get out on transition a little bit, uh, efficiency matters too. She's only three of 10 from the floor, so when she does get those opportunities, she's had a couple open looks that just haven't fallen. Well, DePaul is, is defending well. I mean, yeah. they've got her surrounded. They've been they able are, to get to her when they can. Yeah, yeah, they're challenging her shot. They're pushing her around a little bit, making it difficult. Nothing is coming easy in this game right. on either side. Now you can see the physical nature as everybody's cutting through to the basket. Hell just left alone in the corner and in and out. Paul now one of ten from the outside. This is not the freewheeling shooting team that we're used to seeing in the last couple of games. More spinning, falling away, and a foul is going to bail her out. One of the things that Doug Bruno told me about regarding DePaul shooting and the fact that their three-point shooting has kind of been on a skid lately is that they haven't been practicing at their normal pace, okay? They're, they're totally out of sync with that, as most teams are yeah. because of the schedule. I was just gonna say, who, who, who Games has? on, games off, yeah. you have maybe a one-day turnover. And he said, for our team and the way that we play and the way that we press you and the way that we run, we are in a constant state of conditioning all season long. The, the preseason conditioning they do extends all the way until the very last yeah. day of the season. And when you're not getting that kind of conditioning, your shooting legs suffer as well. And so when you watch DePaul shoot three-pointers, some of them are short. They, th their legs aren't quite where they would be in a normal season where they get two, three, four days of practice in a row where you can go hard. A lot of their practice days are light days because they've got a game the next day. It's been the nature of the schedule that has been tough for DePaul to really have uh, uh, you know, their, their legs and their bodies in the condition that they're used to. It's really interesting when you look at it from that perspective. Lot lost it as she tried to get it up. They include and gets it back. Open look from somewhere, and it's going to be on the right side for Valade. That ball loose. Oh, man. Kelgen hit hard. Well, I see that like at least two or three times every time the ball plays as Deepa Kelgen just hitting the floor hard. She is that player who will get down on the floor, get down and dirty, do whatever she can for a 50 50 ball. Deepa Kelgen just putting her body on the line for the DePaul Blue Demons. Game right. in and game out. Right back up, rub some dirt on it. Here yep. we go. Looking for Hell trying to cut right through. Here's Church now on the drive. Oh, all the way to the nice. rim with the right hand. Yeah, Deja Church coming off a rolled ankle. She has not been 100%, but she looked like it there. Boy, 
That kicked it into a different level of speed there for Deja Church getting to the basket. Lead back to one. Here's Valade driving in, going between defenders and won't fall. It's going to be a foul on Held to have free throws coming up. Taylor Valade getting some great minutes here for Marquette, and she has been handling the ball a lot. Really doing a great job of getting to the basket, breaking down the DePaul defense, challenging there, just finding a seam and drawing that contact. Well, something changed for Megan Duffy and company. She uh, looks at Valade because obviously the minutes have started to go up a little bit. 25 minutes on Monday against Creighton. After just 10, 10 days or 17 days ago in their first matchup. Well, Taylor Valaday, just a sophomore, and you can see the speed just two years ago. She was a state champion here in the state of Illinois in track. Dan Clute in the rebound and right back up. Three-point play the other way. And she missed the first one, so just a bucket. They get something out of it. It's a nice defense by Marquette. Rogers. They had a spin move to the other side if she wanted it. Held. Tough defense, preventing that easy look. And Marquette did a great job of shutting down the lane. Beautiful dump in there for Murata, but she can't finish. Well, we talked about Man. it. You're right, those passes yeah. inside are These really teams good. are getting high percentage looks at the basket, but it is so physical in there, they are just not finishing. Rogers on the spin. She That's is, the back within one. She is so tough to defend. She can get herself all kinds of tough shots with her footwork and the way that she can handle the basketball. Rogers just a freshman, but she's gotten great minutes for DePaul this season. Lot on the drive, left hand short. And she's gonna get a foul out of that. They're gonna get Rogers on that foul. And check the, uh, the board there for Rogers. Just, she's got two now. Doug Bruno is not happy with that call. It, it's been physical up and down, and that was not matching the level yeah. of physical play that we've seen warranting a whistle. Yeah, it almost looked like a lot short arm that shot. That's kind of what that conversation is about <laughs> right now. Probably a little more colorful than what we're telling you. Lead to two. Dalman. Seen her minutes go up as the season's gone on. Morris crossing over from about 18. Boy, That's Morris. her first bucket of the night. A lot like Rogers in the way that she can just create space for herself. That little pullback there and such a good shooter shooting in rhythm. There's King out front looking for that screen. Watch Van Clunen roll down and get position. Lot from three. They don't take a lot of threes. And that one's too much. Back on the other side of the midcourt line for a turnover. I tell you, as this experience has gone on for you and I from a broadcasting standpoint, it is fascinating. As we're in a big building, it is empty, no fans today. Uh, in so, some parts of the Big East, we're starting to see more fans, a little here and there, but mm -hmm. the, the advantage of no fans from a perspective of television is that you can hear everything <laughs> and it has been great to hear the conversation if you're a basketball nut like we are these coaches uh, really into it and making sure these 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 athletes know exactly what they want we are hearing all of those words of wisdom some of them we can't repeat <laughs> foul there but, you know, as you've noticed throughout the year, how has that changed the game for this season? I mean, we've seen it a little bit where it's just some wow. of the free throws are a little weird because yeah. in, in crunch time, there's nobody there. I think it's totally neutralized any kind of home court advantage, honestly. I mean, besides the fact that you have a road team who has to yeah. travel, that's that's a little bit of an advantage. But, but for these two teams, yeah. they're 90 minutes apart. They yeah. can get on a bus ride and do exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, no fans. I mean, that, that's a huge part of the game. And Megan Duffy talking to us about that today, about how – her players recognize the rivalry between these two teams and all the fans that enjoy it too. Look at that bucket from the corner. Moore's starting to heat up a little bit. She is and just really played the shot clock there very well. Beautiful shot. 
Valaday will hold it back out. Differentials at about maybe a second, a half second. Valaday is going to look for some help. King will give it to her. That's look at nice that high pass. Oh my gosh. the baseline for I Van Clunen. I love that pass. As a post player, I love that pass. Beautiful. Morris at the horn. It will count, but it doesn't go. And we, we go to the half. It's all tied up. Look at the fundamentals. Beautiful ball movement, getting it from the high to the low. Van Clunen, very good effort. Double figures leading Marquette at the break. And made three point field goal. We'll have to see if that changes, especially for DePaul, that they need those three point shots to go down. The rebounding advantage for Marquette is pretty significant at this point. And they have 10 second chance points off of those 30 rebounds. Not a, a huge surprise there because they are a bigger team. They are a very good rebounding team, but DePaul is gonna have to figure out a way to get in there and make sure that Marquette isn't getting too many second chance opportunities. They have a couple of those, 10 to four in that uh, category. Offensive rebounds, Marquette with a 12 to seven advantage there. And again, uh, the outside shooting for DePaul, but turnovers, so we talked about turnovers too. Marquette had started to creep up a little bit, but yeah. still at eight, you'll be happy with that it, on the long view. You'll be happy with that eight turnovers. Last time against DePaul, they had 22 turnovers that led to 33 DePaul points. Starters in the second half for DePaul in the first possession. Allen down the lane. Nice. And how much do they have to do that here in the second half? I, I love that. That's a high percentage shot. They want Jory Allen, who is a high percentage shooter, to have her hands on the basketball. She was kind of quiet in that first half. Didn't get very many opportunities. Just two for five from the floor for Jory Allen. A couple of open looks she couldn't finish, too. Starters from Marquette going against that press. Early got a turnover right out of the gate. Ball has not had the lead much in this one. Oh, nice. Inside. Selena Lott with the bucket. She's got seven now. Van Clunen with 10 points to lead. Marquette scores. Lexi held with 11 points to lead everyone. Asia Church, dangerous pass. Morris chases it down. Look at that crossover, nifty move in the lane. Allen right there, the rebound nice. and the put back by Bacalja. <laughs> How about that unselfish move by Jory Allen? She could have gone right back up, but that is what she brings, an inside presence, a rebounding presence for DePaul, trying to stack up those high percentage shots there. When you're not shooting well from three, get it inside. Minute gone by in this third quarter. There's Lott. She goes to the left hand. Puts it up with the left. One more. Got it in the foul. A chance for Marquette to take the lead. You kind of feel like with every time we see a player dive on the floor or get after an offensive rebound to try to keep a possession alive, we're seeing how much this game means to these players. This is a rivalry game. Both teams know it. A long-standing rivalry between the two schools, between the two programs. These players know each other and they are playing for that number two seed in the Big East tournament. I think we're going to see a lot of hustle plays in this second half. Held in the lane, lost it, looking for help and a jump. I don't believe anyone tried to get a timeout. There are times when you do the whole try and get a timeout to save the position. <laughs> there are times you don't. Don't maybe not that, this early. Maybe not this early. Church is really changing directions of that Marquette press break. Cam Taylor, nice beautiful step. baseline look for Murata. Cameron Taylor triple teamed in the post and had the savvy just as a sophomore to be able to pass out of it. Someone was going to be wide open, and she found that someone. They go inside. Back out. Allen puts it on the floor. The spin to the left. Good idea. Couldn't finish it. They go right inside. And a takeaway. Morris. Morris on the run out, stops from 14. Yeah, now if you don't keep that ball tight to your body in the post, then Clunin kind of kept get it out there a little bit, you're gonna have it stolen away. Quick hands on this DePaul defense. A double right there, turnover. 
That's going to belong to DePaul. Back-to-back -back turnovers there for Marquette. They are up to 10 now. We talked about how they don't want to string those together. They were making some mistakes early in the basketball game, kind of settled down, and now they've had a couple in a row. They want to settle back down and, and get back to taking care of the basketball. They do not want to allow this DePaul team to try to capitalize off of their mistakes. Thalman now on the floor for the Blue Demons. And Allen's going to get a break. Bikelja goes out too. Rogers is wow. back in, driving the lane and a whistle. Such a quick first step by Lexi Held. We've talked about how she really is able to watch a defense and know when to kick it into another gear, when to drive by, when to hesitate, when to pull back. Very intuitive player, very instinctual player. Held gets the first one to fall. 81% free throw shooter coming in. We mentioned at halftime her trip to the honor roll. Third time in four weeks she's playing as, as good a basketball as she's had in her entire career. Gets them both to fall. Held's now leading the way with 13 points. Oh There's a takeaway. That DePaul pressure, that was Lexi Held. Getting back quickly on defense, getting that hand in the passing lane. Church driving, spinning, blocked and out of bounds. Boy, it's been physical, it's been tight defense, but mm -hmm. it has been, for the most part, without fouls, and that just shows you how good this defense has been on both sides, really. Yep. Nice. Beautiful inbound, but Morris can get it to go. She was falling away a little bit. Uh, she's frustrated, she wants that shot back. Taylor Valade, again on the floor, looking for the back door. Drive on in for Lott, cutting to the rim. Great movement without the basketball by Selena Lott. Morris bumps, pulls back. That's too short. Shooting woes continue for Morris. King on the drive and a foul coming up. Jordan King will go to the free throw line. Van Clunen gets a bit of a breather and now back on the floor. Lexi Held thought that she had all of that basketball there on that blocked attempt. Maybe just a little bit with the body there against Jordan King, putting Jordan King to the line. And for Held, that is her third foul. And Jory Allen also has three fouls for DePaul, and she is on the bench. Lexi Held staying in the game, though. Not worrisome yet, but one more, and then it becomes very worrisome at this stage of the game. So both free throws go. It's back to a three-point lead for Marquette. Rogers up and under, tried to draw the foul. Late whistle and got it. And so she will go to the stripe. Starting to shoot a little more free throws. As soon as I say, hey, they've been doing great without fouling, and then we've seen a couple of fouls. <laughs> right in a row, right on yeah, cue. Right on cue. But it also, you know, is credit to both offenses recognizing, you know what, stuff defense, the contact's mm -hmm. there. You got to be able to draw that sort of contact to get to the free throw line. Missed the second. Van Clunen, another rebound. And both teams are really doing a nice job of attacking the rim as well, so the contact is going to be there. That's her sixth board. She only had five in the first meeting, so she's doing it on the rebounding front. Tried to get it inside. Dahlman picks up the foul. And, and that's just a tough assignment right there for Dahlman. Marquette does such a good job of posting you up, changing their position on the block. Dahlman was trying to front there and, and just got her hand on Van Cunen. Lob inside, beautiful look. Cam wow. Taylor the finish. One thing that Marquette has done very well all seasons against all teams, including in this game against DePaul, is really exposing matchups. And Lexi Held had a matchup problem there, and Marquette exposed it with Taylor. Kelja out of that double team for Held in the corner. 
Lexi with it on the drive with the left hand. Stops, leans in. Nope. And the rebound for Marquette. Golden Eagles off to the races, four on three. Instead, Lott will pull it back out and swing it around. King holds onto it. King on the drive, all the way to the rim. She snuck through and gets the rebound out of it. Van Clunen lost it. And DePaul ends up with it. It's still loose for a minute. Wow. Man, the look at the hustle. ball out there. Yeah. Nobody could hang onto it. And Cam Taylor draws the foul on the rebound. It shows how important these possessions are. Just hanging on to the basketball. A lot of good defense out here so far to start this second half. Back and forth we go. Marquette holding on to four. By four to midway through this third quarter. Matt Rodewald, Patricia Babcock McGraw with you here. And let me ask you what this conversation is like right now. What, what are they talking about? and some of the things that you've seen here early in the second half. They have got to figure out a way to deal with the paint situation better. Marquette is really just pounding inside, pounding and pounding it. They are looking, they've got the lob passes going, and they are doing a great job on the offensive boards down on the Marquette end. 15 to nine offensive rebound advantage for Marquette. That's led to 13 second chance points. DePaul, they are undersized, but they have played big teams in the past. They know how to defend bigger players. They've got to get in front of these players. They've got to push them off their spots. They have got to find a way to shut down the paint better. Marquette's just taking advantage too much right now. You know, when you look at the numbers, it doesn't feel like it's only a, a four-point deficit for DePaul at this point. One of ten from the outside. They haven't taken a three in this uh, second half as of yet. The rebounding margin is a 17 point, 17 rebound difference, 16 point difference in points in the paint, yet there they are, down by four, right in the mix here. Well, the, the DePaul can always find a way to score points, even when they're not shooting well from three point range. We've talked about the fact that they are able to turn defense into offense in the blink of an eye. They are, uh, they've got all, every player on the floor, they're all good slashers. They can all create for themselves but they, they've got a defensive situation right now. They, they've got to figure out how to shut down those inside post players for Marquette. DePaul overall is a better free throw shooting team so of the two, so if they can get to the line, they're gonna have success. High screen from Jory Allen. And a turnover. Wow, and look at Grandma. Wow. Van Clunen all the way to the rim Grand with the left hand. Grandma's got some wheels. Van Clunen lovingly referred to as Grandma by her teammates. She's a fifth year senior. She's who everybody comes to for advice and help. But man, oh man, she showed us something there. He's a church to respond. And she'll have free throws coming up. Fifth year senior. The only question, <laughs> is anyone with that size, kind of size, can they get a sixth year and enroll in the Evan Eschmeyer <laughs> scholarship program? I <laughs> They're showing us, you know, some agility there, staying on her feet, getting her hand in the passing lane, finishing down the other end. That's that's a big time move by a big. I love it. Grandma. <laughs> the only question is, is she a familiar with Grandmama? <laughs> I, you know is what? anybody on the floor? <laughs> I, I, I doubt it. Dating us a little bit there. Larry <laughs> Johnson, us. the old, the old uh, UNLV product who was so good in the NBA for a long time. But he had that similar build in a sense of like, he had the athleticism mm -hmm. that could you, where you could play in the post yep. and, and really be a, a dangerous four. And then all of a sudden you go get that steal out front, yep. kind of like that. Yep. Uh-oh. There's a comparison I didn't think I'd make today. <laughs> Morris off the steal, all the way to the rim. That was beautiful little screen hedge action by Allen, but she can't right. finish. And that's what has been missing here for DePaul is just being able to turn that defense into offense. They had a great steal there with their pressure. Now they've got to finish those. Valade off the bench has provided tremendous minutes for Marquette tonight. Here's Lott, crossover, down the lane. She wants to get to that left hand, and she did there. And it's the largest lead in a while for Marquette at seven. Rogers trying to respond. Held, opening, stops, and to the rim. Count that, and one. You know, when you need a basket, and DePaul clearly needed a basket, you can put the ball in Lexi Held's hands, and, and she is 
so good at breaking down a defense one on one, getting herself to the rim. You, you see just all the moves that it took to get her there, the little hesitation, hesitating again there as she goes up over the defense. A beautiful drive to the basket by Lexi Held, and, and she's she does so many things well, including three-point shooting, but I really enjoy watching how can she can carve up a defense on her own. That free throw gets her 16 points, leading everybody on the floor, and they've needed all 16 of them tonight. That lead quickly back to four. This one you think maybe Marquette will have a little bit of a run to pull away. DePaul has an answer. Van Clunen out front. You can hear the communication. They are all talking on all sides. Yep, lots of talking. Van Clunen, shot clock running down. King will try it, top of the key, knocks it in. First three of the night for Marquette. And that was a big one. That's, that's a, the cherry on top of the Sunday for Marquette when they can start knocking down threes with all of their interior firepower. And DePaul, three second violation. They've called that twice now. Everyone's gotten a piece of that. Both Van Clunen and Allen have been caught camping. Dangerous pass there. Yep. King at an awkward angle for her to get it. Another one. The pressure doesn't stop once you cross the half court line. That's a concern for Megan Duffy. They get you revved up. And when you're revved up and you're a little pressed and, and you're, you know, you've got the defense bearing down on you, you, you tend to, to keep going at that pace instead of settling down and you can make mistakes. DePaul Bailey and Marquette out there with the foul, but that was almost about to turn into a turnover for Marquette. Deja Church with the foul. Selena Lott. You know, it's interesting, you watch Selena Lott at the line, and Megan Duffy talked about her today when we had a chance to catch up with her. She contributes so many different ways, but how do you convince someone that they contribute in so many different ways? Well, well you make a video and yes. you show them to them. You make them a <laughs> highlight video. You know, Selena Lott started off this season shooting the lights out for Marquette, and then she kind of hit a little bit of a slump and kind of maybe doubting herself a little bit. And turnover here for DePaul, and there's Lott with the basketball right there. Creates a contact but can't finish. Morata trying to go right back into Van Clunen. Double team coming, and she powers it in, extending the lead to double figures for the first time tonight. Timeout to Paul. And again, too much interior play going to the basket. Marquette really using that to its advantage. Big time run from Marquette to extend the lead. 16 points from Lott. 14 from Van Clunen, the Golden Eagles flying high here in Chicago. Need for the Golden Eagles, and you see Selena Lott, the New York senior with 16 points, five rebounds, three blocks, two steals. She's hit her free throws, and she's done everything right today. Well, we started to tell you about how she started the season really hot, then she had this slump, kind of doubting herself, even though she's a senior, she's an all Big East player, and, and, and the, the Marquette coaching staff decided, you know what, we need to build Selena back up. So they made her this highlight video that you were talking about, showing her all the things that she can do from finding open teammates to defending, to rebounding, all the other things that she does when she's not scoring to give her the idea that, hey, you're still a very valuable member of this team. If you're in a slump, you're not hitting your shots, you still do a ton of things for us. And that kind of picked Selena a lot up out of that slump and she's been on fire ever since. But she's had a, a really interesting career. She was a defensive stopper for Marquette early in her career. And she has really brought the offense the last couple of years, averaging about 15 points per game last year. She's right at that number this year. She has 16 points in this game. It's been interesting to watch how she has developed so much as an offensive player in this league. A couple of steals a game, about five assists. That's a beautiful assist right there for Jory Allen to finish. What a nice feed to her. DePaul absolutely needed that bucket coming out of that timeout. See if they can get a couple of stops here to just kind of make sure that they stay right in this thing. Marada's going to cradle it all the way to the rim, but Allen fights for the rebound. Two big plays by Jory Allen back to back for the Blue Demons. There's Morris who struggled shooting, but she's got eight points. Can she get going? 
She draws the foul, and because of that, she'll have free throws coming up. Both teams in the penalty. You know, Megan Duffy talked about hard-nosed and, and always you know thinking about preparation, just something that she took away from her time with Muffin McGraw at Notre Dame. You can see it with five on the floor in terms of not only their level of preparation, they've been able to get some things done, but just that hard-nosed nature, they've been digging in pretty hard tonight. For sure. I mean, both of these teams have. I think this has been a very physical game. Both teams, maximum effort. They know what's on the line. I think both of these teams play a lot in kind of the shadow of their coaches and the kind of the style that their coaches are known for and the way that those coaches coach, that's the way these players play. Morris a 90% free throw shooter, but she splits those two. Get it to back to within eight. Cut down to Lane, count it for Selena Lott, and a chance for the three-point play. I just think that Marquette has excellent ball movement going right now. They are really challenging the DePaul defense. They are making DePaul work and shift, and sometimes the Blue Demons get out of position. You see how well Selena Lott is moving without the basketball there and finishing strong. That was a great play. Simple basketball, really, when you look yep. at it. It's just it's really simple. And she knocks it down for lot 19 on the night. Back to 11, final minute of this third quarter. Blue Demons aren't panicking yet. They're running out of possessions to make it work. And Morris needed that three to go down. She finally got it. That's just the second three of the night for the Blue Demons. Cam Taylor going right back to the rim. Yeah, and that is unusual after a made three and Marquette beats DePaul down the floor. Allen won't take that. That's not her game. Seven second differential. Shot the game clock right now. Out, or held all the way to the rim. Nice Allen the rebound. rebound right back in. Count that one and a chance for a three point play. Oh yeah, and you, and you see just the emotion there. Sonia Moore is about Pounding a hole in the floor with her feet. So excited to see Jory Allen go up with that put back basket. And you see the strength there to not only go back up, but to finish with the contact. That is what Doug Bruno has been so excited about when it comes to Jory Allen and what she brought from Indiana, the transfer becoming eligible this season for the Blue Demons. They need that kind of interior presence. Stomped on the floor so hard, remind me of Ron Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> the old IEPUI coach at Georgia State, he would stomp the floor so hard, and someone said, you know, you're going to hurt yourself. Finally, he did. Stress fracture in his foot. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> that was a good stomp, though. Sonia Moore so excited when she saw that put that go in. End of the quarter. Marquette can't get that to fall. DePaul feeling a little bit better, and Marquette still with some work to do to get a win on the road. And a big stretch for the Babcock McGraw with you. DePaul has some work to do, but they're feeling better. And some of it is because they have stressed that inside game yep. and it's worked for them. I like that. I like that decision. You know, your two best shooters on the floor right now for DePaul are your bigger players. Deja Church, four for eight from the field. And Jory Allen is four for eight from the field. Those are high percentage shooters, high percentage shots that they're getting. I like kind of, even if you don't have them shoot the basketball mat from in the paint, they can always start your offense by kicking back out to open shooters. So I'd like to see DePaul play inside out basketball. It's classic inside out basketball that, that's really, you know, they, they finally hit a three. We hadn't seen one in a while. Yep. And so that, that had a lot to do with it. I'd like to see more ball movement. We've been seeing excellent ball movement in the offense on the Marquette side. Some one-on-one -on -one basketball on the DePaul side. I'd like to see that ball move and pop a little bit more on this end of the floor. Starters have uh, played a lot of minutes for DePaul tonight. They are on the floor right now. Somebody fell down. That was uh, Jordan King. Kind of limbering around a bit. By Sonia Morris. DePaul has been waiting for her to heat up, and it looks like she might just be there. That was a tough shot. 14 now in the night. And it's back within five. Just when you thought Marquette might get control of this thing, we haven't quite, quite gotten there. There's Murata. Lot driving with the left hand. Wow, she has just been getting to the basket, especially on that left side. 
Oh, and a steal oh. right back in. At will, and now that just a heads up play. Wow. Four quick points there for Selena Lott. She's up to 21. And just when you thought that lead was shrinking a bit, a couple big buckets there. Kind of doing it to Paul's way. And the run out for King. Off the miss bucket. Trying to get it inside to Van Clunen. Lot going against Morris. Valaday tries to swing it through. Couldn't quite get that pass there. And a turnover. Selena Lott, you can't lose track of her. Even after a made basket. Yeah, check it out. Just he heads up there. And DePaul can't afford to be making those kind of errors in this situation right now, Matt. They've got to be more careful. She's got 23 now. Scores table can't keep up. And Morris right there about 10 feet. It's a nice curl cut action there to get that yeah, bucket. Yeah, absolutely. She is going to make that shot every time. Such a good jump shooter. We haven't seen as much high-low action. Lob in there, double team taken away. There's oh, Bekelja nice. by herself. Beautiful. Finishes it. And it's back to five. And we talked about how DePaul needed to defend the post better. They did so on that play. Triple cheat team in the post. Van Clunen, watch Rogers shrinking in that backside help. And a foul there. They'll take that. Marquette's got to be smarter than that when you see a post that's got three people swarming. You cannot throw it in there. Somebody else is open. That's the trick there is, is finding that open player. They're a good passing team. We talked about that. That's a different <laughs> animal, though, when you're talking about trying to lob it in yep. when they're bracketing you like that. Van Clooney now on the high block. Cam on the curl right down there. That's a good look. And she will finish wow. it. Wow. They just, they just have an uncanny way of finding each other from that high, low post action. Van Clooney and Taylor, they play off each other so well. And a whistle out front. Oh, we, and we, we talked about that relationship with Megan Duffy between Van Clunen and Taylor. And Taylor, the sophomore, Van Clunen, the redshirt senior. Obviously, Taylor learning a lot from Van Clunen, but Duffy telling us, you know what? Taylor has made Van Clunen better. She has made Van Clunen tougher. Those two go at each other in practice. It's been a great relationship. A jump ball before Lott was able to run away with it. Yeah, they, they want to do high-low action when they can. And, yep. and what that requires, again, for the basketball terms, they're right at the free throw line on that block and then it gets somebody on that low block. You've seen a couple lob passes from the wing. But that time, you they were able to get it to Van Clunen right up top. You set a curl screen, she, it's freeing them up. And that's mm -hmm. the advantage you have size with the ability to finish. Yep. Jordan King, nothing there in the block. Watch Taylor right there. Lock will drive in, beautiful cross, but she lost it, and they'll keep it. Active hands, but Marquette's gonna hang on. Every team needs a glue player. It's really interesting to watch Lot work with everyone. Mm -hmm. Taylor will take it from 14. Boy, she can hit that. That's they are gonna be dangerous. That has been becoming her specialty, that. 14, 17 foot jump shot when she can just pull herself out, making her game all that much more versatile. Morris in the drive. That left hander won't fall. It's going to go to Marquette. The shots are there for DePaul. They are getting some good looks at the basket. They are just having a hard time finishing right now. Just get hammered points in the paint. 56 to 32, that margin in favor of Marquette. They have been doing it on the inside. And that is why they have a nine-point lead. Marquette, take a few minutes to talk about this. Feeling good, up on the road at the pod. Patricia Babcock McGraw with you and Marquette with a nine-point lead. And we've been watching the battle develop between Selena Lott and Sonia Morris. Well, both of these players are two of the top guards in the Big East Conference, and you can see why. They, they just do such a good job of getting themselves their own offense breaking down a defense. They're both good shooters. They're both good drivers and penetrators. Selena Lott has been outstanding offensively as well, creating offense for herself off of her defense. And 
saw Sonia Morris doing such a good job with her jump shots. You see the comparison there. They have really shown up for their teams today. They will both be on the all Big East teams, I'm, I'm sure, at the end of the season. They've both taken 17 shots apiece. And of course, uh, Selena's made a few more. You know, now you're, when you're in this conversation for Megan Duffy, what are some of the things you're paying attention to now? You're expecting that pressure to get dialed up from, from DePaul a little bit yeah. more here these next few minutes. Absolutely, that's exactly what they're talking about, the, the pressure the defense and taking care of the basketball. Marquette doing okay with turnovers, 14 in this game. Uh, so DePaul, you know, not turning them over as much as the last time that these two teams met up. But that's what they're they're gonna focus on right now is just making sure that they're really uh, deliberate with the basketball, that they take good care, be strong with the ball. Nobody with four fouls. Ooh. Rogers the takeaway and a trip. And Lott picks up the foul. That's her third, so and still those, nobody with four. Those kind of passes that kind of hang up in the air, that's exactly what DePaul is, is hoping to do. They're, they're hoping to bait you into that because those hanging passes, that's that's exactly where they come up from behind, and they, they're so quick and can make up so much ground in those passing lanes that that's, that's just what they want. So you, you've got to be real crisp with your passes if you're Marquette coming up the floor against the pressure. Rodgers gets it in. Held on the right side, been quiet for a few minutes. Baseline, no contact. Kelja hits the floor hard after a second chance opportunity. Golden Eagles come out with it. And here's Lott in charge out front. And using the clock on the offensive end, showing some patience here offensively, working with the clock. Beautiful look. Cam Taylor won't roll in, but she'll have free throws coming in. Well, and she wanted that to fall. Well, she did, and, and you know what? She was super strong with the basketball because she had two defenders surrounding her, the one right up top there closing in on her, and, and it, she didn't allow that ball to be swiped away. She was able to make a quick spinning move to the basket, playing with a lot of strength down there on the block. Smooth free throw there. 65% shooter coming in from the line. As we're inching closer to the six minute mark of this one. And the lead, the largest of the night at 11. Hit it a couple of times. Can DePaul start hitting from the outside? Can their inside game open up the outside? Foul there. Again, two for 11 from three. And their season low is four when they had the doors blown off against them against Louisville. As have many <laughs> this season. Yep. Held, try it, and we'll get it to fall. Wow, right, Needed it. right in the face of Selena Lott. That's a gutsy shot by Lexi Held. Oh. And a takeaway, Held, two on one. We'll stop and float it in. Easy peasy and Megan Duffy not liking that. A quick five point turnaround by the DePaul Blue Demons. Just not being careful enough with the basketball. Too many lobby soft passes. Putting it right up there for the DePaul Blue Demons to go grab it. From 11 to six. And let's watch the sequence again. You know, the threes, when you make the threes, it allows you to set up that pressure. Well, I like that shot. That's a Lexi held shot all the way. She will shoot it right in your face and then getting back on defense, getting that steal and an easy bucket. That's a nice sequence there for Lexi held. And for Marquette, Megan Duffy's telling Jordan King, you can't make that pass. You know that. Yep. And they were more concerned about the turnovers in the front court, knowing that the pressure would definitely be there in the back court. But a couple times tonight, we've seen them have trouble in the back court. And this is why you, you cannot count out a DePaul basketball team because they can put the points on the board so quickly, especially with this pressure defense. Starters on the floor with the exception of Rogers, only non-starter out there for either squad. They get through the pressure that time. And Marquette's gonna try to settle it down a little bit. It's just more proof that the Golden Eagles have, still have some work to do to finish this up if they have want to hang on to that six point lead. Lot on the drive with the right hand that time. And Allen, it's a jump. It goes to DePaul. 
lot grimacing right there. You see, she's banged up. This has been physical. It has been. They're trying to free up Held and Morris on those curl cuts. Held will drive on in, floats it. Nope, tipped out. Here's Lot two on two. Crossover. She wants to get left, and she did it. And Clune in the putback. Lot has been getting left all day here. And that has just opened up those rebounding opportunities. Take away, Murata fouled. For Van Clunen. That's a good Van foul, Van you Van think about it. Has been good on the boards here today, Matt. Seven rebounds for Van Clunen. And those second chance points for Marquette starting to grow here. 18 of those for Marquette. You know, there's no clear path, but that was a pretty good foul in terms of DePaul, allowing them to set back up on the defensive end. Lob into lot. That won't go. Taylor put back. How many second chance and points do they have now? That's 20. They have just been climbing all over the offensive boards. It's their 19th offensive rebound tonight. Church to the rim. Can't get a call. Murata lost it. But Jordan King will settle it down. Under four minutes now with a 10-point lead. Eerily familiar feeling for DePaul from what they had on Saturday against Creighton. Could not score, could not get stops when they needed it. Can they do it now? Here's Church. Looking inside, here's Allen now, trying to step through. Miscommunication, mm -hmm. Morris got to chase down Lott. And the left hand lay in. This is the biggest lead for the Golden Eagles tonight at 12. Morris will pop it from 16. Sonia Morris has tried to answer as best she can. She has made a ton of tough shots in this game. Got 18 now. Taylor. Uh -oh. Marquette really doing whatever they want. And Jory Allen, uh, something happened on that play. They're defending that Van Cleenan basket, and she went down. Hopefully she'll be okay, but she looked like she was in a little bit of pain there. That didn't look right. And she's trying to tough it out to get to the bench. Maybe she is walking through your screen. We're trying to look to see what happened, but. Was it, did it happen down here or did it happen a few possessions prior? We're trying to, get, trying to get an idea for it. Maybe not an indication that. You can see her hop off oh. the floor there and just plop down on the uh, floor. Something going on with one of her feet, I think. Ankle, foot. We'll keep an eye on that. Meantime, a turnover. Marquette in firm control with two and a half minutes. Trying to get in charge of second place with a date with UConn this weekend. Van Clunen, oh, man, wide nice. open, back cut for Cam Taylor. Taylor's got 20 points, check that, 18 points. The offense has been fluid throughout this game for Marquette. Morris won't get the friendly roll, it's gonna stay with the Paul. And again, we saw another example of that high low post action on that basket, beautiful basketball. Back screens have made a difference for the Golden Eagles tonight. And DePaul has had no answer from the outside. Held will try it from three. In and out. And Clunin finds a guard. They're gonna keep pushing it a bit. Just when you thought for a minute that DePaul might get back into this one. Back cut again. That six-point lead became 14 in a hurry. 
Rodgers will pull up. Too strong. And Dahlman couldn't chase down the rebound. This could be a, a pretty big uh, statement stretch here for Marquette to come in here and if they hang on to beat DePaul on its own floor, they just beat Creighton and Villanova. This would be their fifth straight win. I mean, that's a really nice stretch for Marquette as they head into a game against Connecticut. Jordan King to finish there on the outside. She's got 13 and a 16 point lead. This was very tight for a while. And as we enter the final minute, Marquette said that is enough with a six point lead. Rolled to a 12 2 run until that basket right there. I think Marquette just held true to who they are and they punished DePaul inside. High, low post action, getting on the board, second chance opportunities. This height advantage for Marquette, their length, their size, it bothered DePaul in this game and Marquette really took advantage. Just wore down DePaul. So as you see this Marquette squad is presumably holding on to this 14 point lead for 37 seconds to go. They'll face off against UConn. Just uh, 19 days ago saw him, it was not, it was not good. But Megan Duffy had positive things to say about a 29 point loss at home to you know, the best team in the country. They're, they're learning how to play against teams like that. And she said, you know, our goal is to be able to be a team like a UConn, to beat teams like UConn. And she really believes that this conference has a lot of teams that are right on the brink of that. She wants the Big East Conference, as does Doug Bruno, to get more respect nationally. And she feels like there are a lot of teams in the Big East who are going to be a tough, tough first round opponent, you know, preparing for a team like this in the first round or if you even have less time than that these teams and the way that they play marquette with their size depaul with their speed and defensive pressure that that's that's a tough scout that's a tough game to prepare for in the ncaa tournament so megan duffy really believing as does doug bruno that this big east the teams in the ncaa tournament could really make some noise they go to uconn actually on monday i've said this weekend a few times morris will have an open look it won't go marquette the rebound and that will do it. And then they'll stay for the Big East Tournament next weekend. DePaul has some soul searching here as they head into March, but Marquette, a critical win on the road. The Golden Eagles put it away with a 14 point win, 85 to 71 the final. I think this DePaul team has a ton of potential. They will bounce back from this, but Marquette is playing excellent basketball right now. Five straight wins. They've got